Hello everybody, Tim here again from Lessons on the Web, and today we're doing another review, actually another kind of tablet review of an application that you can get for Windows 8.1 tablets, and this is called StaffPad, and you can write your own music on it, it's really cool, and uh, I'm going to show you what it's all about, so let's get started. Okay, now we're going to talk about what StaffPad exactly does. So if you're not familiar with music notation software, it allows you to write music and play it back and adjust it and write in dynamics and all sorts of things in a way that looks like printable, you know, professional printable sheet music. Now, uh, StaffPad does all of those things, at least from my experience. I've owned Sibelius, a desktop uh, music notation software for years, and pretty much anything you can do in StaffPad, you can also do or anything you can do in Sibelius, sorry, you can also do in StaffPad. So you can obviously write in notes. Let me show you exactly how it works. So keep in mind that because we are on a tablet, we have this magical thing called a stylus, which allows you to write on the tablet, right? Well, what StaffPad does is it really combines the traditional method of writing in notes. Let me write in some notes, they'll look terrible since my handwriting is not very good, but let's just see what happens. I'm writing in four quarter notes, you notice how they're not spaced out very well. They look kind of like stick figures, not very attractive. And then you tap out of the measure and it turns it into awesome text. By the way, you can say, okay, I messed up on that second note. I really wanted to make that an A instead. You click on it and you, with the stylus and you drag it up and it changes to whatever you want. Now let's say I wanted to make this a chord, an F major chord. You do the same thing, you draw like little dashes where you want your quarter notes and it will make them for you. Let's say I wanted um, an eighth note uh, on this chord, you know, two eighth notes rather. So I'm gonna draw another chord, I'm gonna beam them together and most of the time hopefully um, it will understand what you're trying to do and it will create um, exactly what you want. As you can see, it's very easy once you get the hang of it. When you first get it, you might have a little bit more trouble, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, you can do almost anything you can do, like I said, on a desktop application. You can draw in a sharp. As kids say when I cringe at them, they say hashtag, but that is a sharp. And then, of course, you can do the next one is a natural, because everybody knows about that rule, right, or the sharp carries over, so you're going to need your natural. You can make um, flats, even though I have trouble with that sometimes, but there it worked great. It's surprising when things work great on camera. They always seem to um, not work when you're recording, but um, you can draw like pretty much anything. You know, you can draw like whole notes. Um, you draw whole notes pretty much as you would expect. You can, I can make that in a half note because I meant like if I messed it up, although you have to draw it close enough to the note. Come on. I don't know. It's not working for me. Let me try it this way. Whoops. There we go. Actually, the reason it wasn't working is I was drawing the line on the other side. Keep in mind when you have a chord that moves up past the middle line of the staff, you have to draw the line um, down and to the left, uh, which I had forgotten. But anyway, you know, you draw another one. Pretty easy. And there you go. Not too bad. Another, um, lots of other great things about it actually that you can do on almost anything else is that you can right click with your stylus. Your stylus with your Windows tablet has two buttons. Um, the one towards the tip is more of an erase button in staff pad and most applications as well. And then this back one's more of an options button. So you click that and you can change your time signature, your key signature, or your clef. P pretty handy, you know, almost any musician is gonna need this. And I've transposed the thing into G, or at least I've put it in the key of G. I may have to change some notes around so it is in the key of G, but you get the point. So like if I wanted the ne next measure, by the way, this is your playback line, that, that red line. I like to move it out of my way when I don't need it. And you right click, and you can change your clef time signature or key signature again. So if you wanted to modulate or change time signatures, it's really easy. Um, of course, you can play back. Of course, that sounded terrible because it's just a bunch of uh, random notes. But uh, after you write your song or write a little piece of a song, 
You can play it back right on the spot to see if you're on the right track or you need to make uh, those extra adjustments. So if you're done the piece, you know, what happens at the end of a piece? Well, we need a bar line, right? Either a, uh, like a repeat one. Actually, you tap on the bar line itself for this. And you can add lyrics, change bar line, or insert text. We're going to change our bar line. And the one at the very end is called the final. Um, that actually exited out. Here we go. The final. And there we go. Um, now our piece, our one measure song is complete. So what we can do is we can save it. Hit export and save. It does save everything automatically I found so far. I just like to hit save for my own security uh, that I feel like it's definitely saved. And then you can export it as like an mp3, a MIDI, you know, things that are playable on almost anything. Uh, you can export it as a staff pad file to open it up on other tablets, I suppose. And then export as music XML, which you can open on Finale or Sibelius, those desktop applications I was talking about earlier. So it has a lot of versatility and a lot of functionality, and it's just been a blast writing uh, music on this thing. It's uh, really wonderful. And one of the things I want to say is I've been using this uh, in my local piano teaching. I teach, you know, around my neighborhoods and things like that. And uh, the students love this thing. They pay way more attention to it than flashcards. You know, I can, um, let me bring up a blank score, and which is really easy to do. Watch how fast I do this. So what I do is, you know, I have a sheet for each student. I will name the sheet after their name. They really love that to come back to their sheet every time and it's so much easier to uh, and so much better they pay attention to a lot more um, doing note reading like this like saying okay what's this note and they'll say of course an F because they're smart students of mine and then you know if I move it up so far you know what is that interval or like what uh, what letter is it now so there's a lot of things you can do I can I can quiz them on um, triads you know seventh chords uh, inversions um, Oops, there you go. And pretty much anything, you know, key signatures, I can show them anything. And because it's more interactive, they love it. And by the way, I write a lot of songs with my students now. Um, of course, with me guiding them along the way for the most part, although I like to have them, you know, really explore, you know, what sounds good and what might not sound good. So, and they love that. They love, you know, writing their songs, coming back to them. For the most part, uh, the, the kids really love this and the, the adults too. So I think it's really added a lot to my um, piano teaching. Of course, I can teach without it. I've been doing it for a long time. But, you know, I can take this tablet with me anywhere so long as I remember to charge it. And uh, the students just love it. And I think um, it's really added a lot of value. Okay, uh, let's see. One last thing I want to talk about, or one of the last things, is that you can write music for pretty much anything. There's a whole list of instruments, woodwind, brass, percussion, strings, voices, keyed instrument, guitars, and um, as you notice, you know, for like things like guitar, there's only one instrument, the bass guitar. So I believe what I've heard is that they are releasing patches and updates to add more instruments um, into staff pad, but I believe they're just working mostly on the functionality. Right now, at least that's what I get the impression, uh, which is an awesome thing. By the way, this gets updated uh, fairly often since over the three months I've gotten it, and it works so much better now than it did when I first got it. Not to say it worked bad, but it just works so much smoother. Um, I don't have any problems with the stylus input before it would draw in weird places. Now it doesn't do that, so they do update their stuff, which is a great thing to have your, you know, the thing you invest money in be supported. So anyway, you go to... You know, you start a new one, and starting a new um, thing is easy as that. But of course, you don't have to do piano like we've been doing so much. I have a lot of untitled scores I need to get rid of. But you can write for anything, and you can actually, what you can do as well, not here, is you can go to templates, and actually you can save your own templates, but as you can see, there's a big band, the orchestra, uh, string quartet, jazz quartet. So there's a lot of things, and you can of course change your um, change your instruments halfway through the song, or you know while you're working on a song rather. You know you can transpose, but you hit instruments, 
and you just change whatever instruments you want and you place them in the position you want them to appear in the score and it will automatically change it for you. It's really useful, really easy to use. Um, so do I recommend StaffPad? Yes, I do. Um, if you can afford the Windows tablet for it, they're quite hefty, you know, they're at least $500, I think, like to get a Surface Pro 3. Um, and the one, this one ha I have here is almost $1,000. And of course, there's one that's like $1,500 or more. And especially when the Surface Pro 4 comes out, this is a Surface Pro 3, by the way, it works great with it. Um, it will probably be even a little bit more expensive. But there, if you want the, you know, the... Um, the cheapest option, I would go for that, but I like this. It has a nice bigger screen. Resolution is really nice and clear, uh, very easy to use. Um, but I do recommend it for anybody who's looking for an easy way to write music or if you teach. It's a great teaching tool, and uh, I can implement it, obviously, in these online videos, so it's great for that. I can use it in the office and while I'm away. So I really think, um, I don't know if it's like as revolutionary as the uh, the commercials for it I've seen online but it is awesome <laughs> you know I, I'm not gonna mince words it is fun to use it's fun to uh, easy to use um, you can use lots of different instruments and it's it doesn't do anything I couldn't do before except use the stylus and, and it translates that that's really cool feature um, but, um, it's just totally awesome. And so do I recommend StaffPad? Well, yes, I do. Um, I bought it about three months ago and it's been amazing. I saw something about it online and I was like, I just have to have this. I think I can use it a lot in my teaching and in my online videos. So far, it's been very, very useful for that. So I really recommend it, especially if you have the use for it. Even if you're a beginner, I think it's kind of good to get uh, because you can get instant feedback on um, what you're doing. I mean, obviously it won't correct your music for you, but it will. you can play it back right on the spot. Really easy, really easy to use for the most part. Keep in mind that when you first start using it, it might not understand what you mean. So let me say what I mean. So let me draw something I know it won't understand because I just haven't drawn anything like that before. You click out of the measure and you're like, what happened? Well, you click on whatever you tried to do with your finger and it will bring up a list of suggestions and you have to tell the program what you meant by that and it will remember that from then on. So if I save that, you know, as a beam for an eighth note, whenever I drew it from then on, uh, that's what it would translate into. So you have to, in the beginning, tell the, the application staff pad what you mean when you um, write in your music. But other than that, Great to use, easy to use. It's actually easier to use over the t time because it does learn uh, what you're trying. All right, everybody, that concludes the staff pad review. As you can see, you can do quite a lot with it. I love it so far and have tons of uses for it. If you're, whether you're a teacher or you're somebody who likes to write their own music, then this is probably for you and it's highly recommended for me. If you want to find a tablet to run the software on, check the description below uh, where you can find a list of a few options to you know, be able to run the software. You do need a kind of tablet. It won't run on your iPad or anything like that, at least not that I know of uh, right now. So only Windows tablets, but you want to make sure that you have the right one. And all the ones I have listed below uh, will definitely run this software. As always, you want to check out uh, LessonsOnTheWeb.com. Just had to say that, where you have uh, a huge collection of piano lessons, music theory lessons, rhythm lessons. So if you want to get a lot better at piano than what my piano lessons can offer or my YouTube lessons can offer rather, and a lot of other YouTube lessons can offer, head over to LessonsOnTheWeb.com. And uh, thanks as always for listening, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Thank you very much.